Good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Hannah Hutchinson. I'm one of the associate pastors here at St. Paul. We're so glad that you joined us for worship this morning online. We would love it if you would like our Facebook page and share this worship service so that we can have as many people worshiping with us as possible this morning. We would love to connect with you. Um, you can fill out an online connect card at connect.stpaulos.org. Uh, let us know if you have any prayer requests or if you are interested in getting plugged in with our church family. We've got a couple of announcements. Um, this coming Saturday on October 24th, we've got a day trip to the Orange Beach area to help those affected by Hurricane Sally. So if you would like to serve, you can contact Nathan at nathan at stpaulos.org. We've also got a fun event next Sunday night, October 25th at 5 o'clock p.m. at our East Campus. This will be our Harvest Fest. You can come dressed up in your favorite costume. We'll have lots of fun, food, and games um, outside. Um, we'll be distanced, but we hope to have a lot of fun with our church family. So we hope that you will join us, and now um, we will begin worship. Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now born of honor, hallelujah, and the glory, hallelujah, 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 and the glory, we cry us on this new morning and in every moment of our lives, gracious God. From, from generation, generation to generation, generation we, we praise, praise your, your holy name. name. Like our ancestors before us, we proclaim your greatness to our children. For, For we, we have, have seen, seen your deeds of power and witnessed witness your goodness in our lives. As you have opened your hand to all, satisfying the desire of every living thing, Open our hearts so that we might share the gifts we have received from you. Let us worship God in gratitude and joy. Our hymn is page 400 in your United Methodist hymnal. If you have a United Methodist hymnal at home, come thou fount of every blessing. Oh, 
Let's affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? If you have prayer requests, concerns, or joys, you can send those to prayer at stpaulos.org or call the office. We would love to hear from you and to partner with you in prayer. Let's go before the Lord in prayer together. Dear Lord, we recognize your goodness. We recognize that you are such an amazing, generous God that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And, O oh, Father, we thank you for the great gift, the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you sent for us to lay down his life so that we could be saved and so that we could know the unconditional love Lord, we look to you today for all of our needs, those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are lonely, whatever it is that we need, Lord, we look to you and we trust you and we ask you to meet those needs, to be our comfort and our peace and our joy, both in the highs and in the lows. Lord, we ask that you would make it on earth as it is in heaven, that we would seek your kingdom first, and that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now is the time of our worship where we offer our tithes and offerings to God. We want to thank you for your faithful support and partnership with St. Paul as we seek to help people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ. And you can give through mail or online. Uh, let's pray together. God of power and glory, we come today offering ourselves and our gifts as we pray for your presence in a world that is hurting and divided. Much of what we see is chaos, confusion, and anxiety, a world that desperately needs to see your presence and your glory. More than just our gifts of money, we pray our lives might be a window into your love and compassion. We pray your light might shine through us to the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
scripture reading today is from Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. Adam had relations with his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today and this month of October, we are continuing our stewardship series, which is centered on being all in for Christ. So we're going to think about what that means. What does it mean to be all in 
for Christ? What does it look like to be all in as a disciple of Jesus? How do we know if we're all in or we're just kind of somewhat in, kind of lukewarm? To be all in for Christ means that we are totally committed followers, followers of Jesus. And a big way that we show this commitment to Christ is by putting our priorities in order. And there's one person that really ended up getting their priorities straight. And this is a guy named Eli Manning. And even though we all have our different teams, I think there's one thing that we can agree on. And that's being proud of our Mississippi football stars. We've got Eli and Dak Prescott, Brett Favre, Walter Payton. These guys excelled at the sport of football because they prioritized the game. And Eli really demonstrated what it looks like to get priorities in order. I really didn't know this story about Eli until recently, but it was during his freshman year at Ole Miss, the police were called to a frat party, and Eli was arrested for public drunkenness and disorderly conduct. And this was a really crucial point in Eli's life because at this point, his priorities were out of whack and he was faced with a big decision. What would his future be? And Coach Cutcliffe sat Eli down and asked him, what kind of football player do you want to be? Do you wanna just be an average college player that gets in trouble fairly often? or maybe just a pretty good quarterback. But what about being a great leader or even one of the best football players of all time? Eli decided then back in 2000 that he was going to commit to being the best player he could be. And the rest is history from there. He went on at Ole Miss to break many of his father Archie's quarterback records, and he led the New York Giants to two Super Bowl wins as their MVP. Eli got his priorities in order. He committed to being all in to the game of football. He prioritized being the best football player he could be. So just like Coach Cutcliffe asked Eli, I want to ask you, what kind of disciple do you want to be? God doesn't call us to be average, lukewarm, half in, half out Christians. And just like Eli made a commitment, he made a commitment to make his football career his top priority. We too are called to commit to being all in as followers of Christ. And this looks like us choosing to establish God as our top priority, seeking first the kingdom of God. To be all in for Christ means prioritizing God first and foremost. And today we read the story of Cain and Abel from Genesis 4. This passage gives us a clear picture of what it looks like to put God first. In the story, we see that God approved of only one of their offerings. While Cain gave some of his fruits, this passage specifically says that Abel gave some of the firstborn of his flock to God. We see here that the reason God didn't approve of Cain's offering is because he didn't give his first fruits. And this theme of giving first fruits is found in many places throughout the Bible. For an offering to be acceptable, it must be the first fruits or the firstborn that's given to God. In Proverbs 3, 9, it specifically says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. So why is this important? Why does God specifically ask for our first fruits. Well, we see that Abel gave to God the firstborn sheep as an act of obedience. It was an offering on God's terms rather than his own. To give that firstborn 
was a risk because it wasn't guaranteed that more sheep would be born. Abel's offering was an act of faith, faith that God would provide. And he showed that he trusted God by offering his first fruits. Abel made honoring God his first priority. But on the other hand, Cain was selfish, and he thought of himself first rather than God. So instead of trusting God to provide for him, Cain made sure that he had enough food for himself before he gave the offering to God. So instead of setting aside his first fruits to begin with, Cain later asked, is there anything left to give to God? Cain gave a leftover offering rather than an offering of faith and obedience. So it's clear we want to be like Abel, not like Cain. We want God to be pleased with our offering. We want God to be pleased with us. We want God to find us faithful. So how do we honor God like Abel? We give our first fruits by trusting and obeying God. And there's another person in the Old Testament who shows us what this looks like, and that is Abraham. God asked Abraham to offer him his first fruits. But this wasn't the first fruits of the crops. It wasn't the firstborn of the livestock But God asked Abraham to offer his one and only his firstborn son. But this was no ordinary firstborn son. Because if you remember, God had made a big promise to Abraham. God had promised to make him into a great nation, to give his family promised land, to bless all the families of the earth through him. He promised to make his descendants as numerous as the dust and the stars. And this big, big promise could only be fulfilled through Abraham's family line, through his wife, Sarah, bearing a son. But Sarah was barren, and they were both really, really old. Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90, and God's promise seemed impossible. And even though Abraham and Sarah didn't believe, they laughed at God's promise, God was still faithful regardless. And a son, Isaac, was miraculously born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age. Isaac was the fulfillment of God's promises. So, it was really, really strange when God told Abraham to kill Isaac, to sacrifice him as a burnt offering. This would put the entire promise in jeopardy. Because without Isaac, God's promises of land and descendants and blessing would be meaningless. If Abraham sacrificed Isaac, God's promise would amount to nothing. But even so we see Abraham respond to God with trust and obedience. Abraham didn't hold back his first fruits. He didn't hold back his firstborn son from God. Abraham traveled to the mountain and he prepared the burnt offering. He tied up his beloved son and laid him on the altar. Let's take a moment and think about this. Let's put ourselves there in the heaviness of this moment. This moment when Isaac realized what was happening. This moment when Abraham held up the knife and raised it over Isaac. How Abraham must have felt in this moment we can't begin to comprehend. To get to that place with a sword lifted above his precious son is difficult to even imagine. But it was in this moment 
that Abraham proved his trust in God. He didn't withhold even the most important thing, the most important person in his life, but he offered his beloved son, the miraculous fulfillment of the promise. He offered Isaac to God. Abraham willingly offered his first fruits, his firstborn. This is true faith. And this is what it looks like to be all in for Christ. This is what God calls each of us to, to not hold anything back from God, to prioritize obedience to God over everything else. And thankfully, God provided for Abraham. God stopped him from killing Isaac and provided a lamb for him to sacrifice instead. This ram reminds us that God provides. When we trust and obey God, he will provide for us. And now this isn't a prosperity gospel. It doesn't mean that our every prayer will be answered exactly how we want it to. But we know that our God provides. Our God will always be with us, even in the fire, even to the very end of the age. God will bless our trust and our obedience. And the beautiful thing is that God doesn't call us to do something that he hasn't already done for us. God, our Father, gave his one and only beloved firstborn son. The book of Colossians calls Jesus the firstborn of all creation. God sent Jesus to be an offering for us so that we could be saved, so that we could know the unconditional love of God. There's no greater gift. There's no greater love than this that God would send his firstborn son to lay his life down for us. We serve such a loving, such a generous God. And our God shows us how to be generous. God shows us exactly what it looks like to give our first fruits. Last week, Rick reminded us that everything we think we own is actually God's already. When we give to God, we're simply giving back to God a portion of what is already his. Everything in heaven and on earth is the Lord's. God created it all. He owns it all. But God has so generously, graciously given to us, blessed us with so many good gifts. And he calls us to be good stewards, of what he's given us. He calls us to give a portion back to him, but not just any portion, our first fruits. This looks like the first fruits of our income, that first 10% or whatever percentage it is that you need to start with. Our first fruits is that first percentage of money that we set aside for God before we subtract all the rest of those good things that we pay for every month. But not just money. This also looks like giving the first fruits of our time, committing to spend the first day of the week worshiping God with our church family, honoring the Sabbath as a day of rest in God's presence. This looks like giving God the first fruits of our days, Spending time praying and reading God's word. This looks like giving the first fruits of our time in service, serving God, sharing God's love with others. And next week is our Pledge Sunday. If you're a member of this church, when you joined, you committed to supporting St. Paul with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. This week, I want to encourage you to take some time to think about how you're following through on that commitment. Take some time in prayer, asking God 
how and what he's calling you to give. God's calling us not just to give some of our fruits, not just some of our money or some of our time, but he's calling us to give our first fruits. He's calling us to be all in as disciples, to make him our first priority. And Coach Cutcliffe asked Eli Manning, what kind of football player do you want to be? And I want to ask you today, what kind of disciple is God calling you to be? Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for being such a generous God, for pouring out your love on us so graciously. And Lord, we want to respond to that love. We want to respond as faithful disciples that are committed to following you no matter where you lead us. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us, that you would show us how you're calling us to give, how you're calling us to serve, how you're calling us to spend our time. Lord, would you lead us and guide us to be faithful disciples who faithfully give our first fruits to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of invitation is Trust and Obey, page 467 in the hymnal.
you so much for joining us in worship this morning. We pray that as you go throughout this week that you would feel the presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with you. Amen. Thank you.